Hi friend, in this tutorial we are going to take another look at a reference photo from Unsplash.com and paint a sunset seascape right there. It's going to be so much fun and I can't wait to get started with you. Here is the reference photo that we're going to use and there is the final project and here are the materials that I'm using in this tutorial. So go ahead and grab what you need and let's get started. First, let's get our paper wet and we're going to, it looks like this scene is split uh, almost exactly in half. So we are going to get the first half of our paper wet first because we're just gonna paint the sky and then we're going to paint the ocean after we're done with the sky. But I will note that I'm going, I'm going to attempt to do this mostly in one layer. So, um, you know, I'm not gonna like wait for the sky to be dry before I paint the ocean, just because I want to show you what it looks like when you have a more loose feel, not worrying about whether it's perfect, whether everything looks exactly right, just letting your paintbrush kind of wander. So it looks like the sky is this cloudy sunset kind of sky with a lot of orange down here. And then the sun, right where the sun is in the middle, it gets lighter and lighter and lighter yellow till it's almost white. And so we're gonna start by painting the sun and then move a little bit outward. So in order to do that, I'm gonna take some yellow. Uh, you can't see my palette off to the side here, but I'm taking some yellow and then I'm putting a lot of water in my yellow. And then I'm just gonna paint around, paint like a big circle like this, leaving the white space so that there is, that is where the brightest part of the sun is going to be. And uh, it's okay if it's not like a perfect circle, we're painting wet on wet, and so the paint is going to blend into this white space. But as much as I can, I'm gonna try to leave a little bit of white space right there as I continue painting. So I had a little bit of like a mid yellow there and now I'm gonna take some yellow ochre and keep painting around that space so that there's like a little gradient uh, to mimic the sun's glow coming out from the sun here. And then after I paint that, and I'm just gonna do a little bit more uh, dabbing and then I'm gonna take some just clean water and keep dabbing just all the way around like this. Now I'm gonna take some orange and be a little more loosey-goosey. So not caring so much about where the orange goes because once again, I'm not trying to make this look exactly like the photo. I'm mostly using the photo as a reference in order to get uh, some of the colors that would be good in a sunset like this. And uh, just to kind of, you know, ground me and give me a place, a sense of how to put lay down all of these colors. So I have some orange. It looks like some of this orange is a little on on the color on the color in the painting looks a little slightly more red orange and so I am going to add just a little bit of red orange up here and all the way across. And then I'm going to there's a ton of pigment on this sunset right now. And so I'm washing off my brush and using just clean water, I'm going to move the pigment around and altering the values and uh, creating more of that like loose blended watercolor kind of feel. And that's one of my favorite techniques to do with watercolor is once you have p enough pigment on the paper, while it's still wet, as long as you're using the wet on wet technique, you can just take clean water and just kind of move it around and paint with water, so to speak, um, or rather, you know, just painting with the pigment that's already on your paper. So I'm gonna take some more yellow ochre now and um, just kind of add more of that pigment onto here, just a little bit and do the same thing where I wash off my paintbrush and uh, just kind of spread it around using the wet on wet technique. I'm not really, I don't really have much of a rhyme or reason as I'm spreading this paint around. Sometimes you can, when you paint sunsets, there are like uh, some strokes that make it look more like clouds than not. But for this piece, we're just going for a loose watercolor feel. 
So one thing I am going to do though is wash off my paintbrush again and then starting in the middle where the sun was supposed to be, just kind of push the paint outward so that I'm keep so that I know I'm keeping this spot a little more um, light than any of the other ones. Uh, and then finally, there are some purplish, uh, like grayish clouds on the sunset here. And uh, just a quick note about color theory. I know that purple and yellow are complementary colors and blue and orange are complementary colors. And so when I add, if I wanna add these clouds here, it's going to neutralize some of the colors. And that may or may not be a, an effect that you want. Um, but I think that it is worth giving it a shot. So I am going to take Basically, I'm gonna take a little bit of Payne's Gray and mix it with just a little bit of yellow, not yellow, Payne's Gray, and mix it with just like a little bit of purple, and I'm doing that off to the side. And then I'm just going to um, put some of these clouds out here, just kind of loosely off to this side over here, and then up top like that. And so if you see the spots where this color is touching the um, other colors that we have, it's kind of neutralizing them and turning them brown. And so to counteract that, we do want to keep those clouds that same neutral color, but to counteract that, I'm going to first use some lifting techniques. So I'm getting my brush clean and wet and then uh, using a paper towel, I am wiping off most of the excess water so I can just kind of manipulate the paint pretty easily on here uh, and that's to soften the edges a little bit of these clouds so that they're not so like spider like um, as they bleed onto the paper I'm just lifting off to soften these edges and then I'm going to take more uh, of the colorful pigment and just put a little bit more on the in the sky before I finish here. So I'm gonna get a little bit more red orange and just kind of do the same thing that I have been doing. Place it around here, around the clouds. And then before I finish, I'll probably do a little bit more lifting just to soften all of these edges up a little bit. But I just wanted to add a little more color here so it's not quite so washed out because this, uh, this sunset is pretty vibrant. So I added some red orange. Now I'm adding a little bit of yellow ochre. And then I feel like I have enough pigment. So I'm gonna take my clean brush now and just kind of dab at the pigment and move it around with water so that it is not quite so concentrated. And I'm moving it around, making sure to keep this little spot over here white as much as possible and I got below my skyline a little bit but that's okay because I'm just gonna extend it <laughs> that's not a hard and fast thing and put some more color down here just like that it looks like in this uh, painting, there's like gray blue clouds on the side and then lots of like red orange on the bottom. And so I wanna try to mimic that. But again, it's okay if this just turns out to be a like a messy blend of colors because sunsets often turn out to be that way anyway. Um, so then I'm gonna take some clean water and just push Kind of make this circle again and then I'm going to form the clouds one more time off to the side over here and then I'll do my lifting softening techniques as well So I've laid down some of that pigment and now I'm just going to take, this is called a thirsty brush, by the way. When you, 
clean it off and then you wipe it off on a paper towel to get rid of all almost all of the excess water so that you can lift some of the pigment and the way that I use a thirsty brush is to like I said soften some of these edges here um, and the reason that works is because the wet on wet technique watercolor is more likely is less able to be controlled when you're using more water so the less water you use uh, with the element that you can control meaning your paintbrush the more you can uh, kind of make the watercolor do what you want it to do while it's still on this piece of paper so um, now I'm just going to push some of the pigment inward a little bit here because I don't I didn't want the sun to be quite so big and I'm going to add very light value so up until this point I had been using a lot of like dense pigment but I'm just going to add very light value yellow around here again because it kind of got washed out Using the wet on wet technique in this loose style is a lot of washing off your brush and using a clean brush and then putting more pigment down because you lost some of the vibrance of the pigment. Uh, that's why a lot of watercolorists like to do sunsets like this in layers. And so like if I did one layer of the yellow and the orange and then layered on the clouds separate from all of that it's easier to manipulate the paint but for this particular video i just wanted to show you what it would look like if we tried to do it all in one layer in this kind of loose style and i think it worked out pretty well so i'm just going at some point you kind of have to call it good and so i'm going to call that good and start working on the ocean and so the way that i'm going to because i want to try to do this all in one layer like i talked about or at least mostly all in one layer is I'm going to take the ocean in two sides. First, I'm going to take some clean water and get um, my ocean part wet with clean water, but I'm only going to touch the part of the sky in a few places uh, because I don't want all of this paint to come rushing down. Um, I only want a little bit of it to get that kind of fun bleed a ble blending bleeding effect between the ocean and the sky and I'm doing this in two parts like one side and then the other because notice this like twinkle of uh, sunlight coming down the middle here we are going to try to mimic that um, by in part using the white space of our paper so I you can't see it very well because water is you know transparent but I've laid down water on one side and then on the other side and then I've left a little bit of dry uh, like a strip of dry space and then between the two sides I'm just going to put some more water on here in thin stripes that will kind of help to mimic um, the twinkling of the water and then after we have most of the ocean down I'm probably going to use some white gouache to um, just to layer on top of as a, as a last little thing to help solidify that twinkling effect. But uh, for now, let's try to use the white space. So then I'm going to take some blue. This is like an indigo blue or even like a Payne's gray. And um, just using, it's a pretty light value, so really watery. Just using strokes like this, I don't want to make it all one color. I want to leave some like stripes of white space and that's so that we can layer on even more colors. The thing about water that makes it so tricky is that there are all these different colors and it's hard to know exactly where to place them. But that's the nice thing about loose watercolor is you don't have to place them exactly where they have to go, right? In order to make it look realistic because that's not our goal. Our goal is just to Use this as a reference photo, use this photo as a reference in order to help guide us as we are guiding the paint. So now that I've laid down some loose uh, blues, and see, look, some of the blues are even blending, bleeding into the sky, which I think is kind of a cool effect. I'm going to lay down um, a few stripes of this loose orange. And note that orange and blue are complementary colors, so if they blend directly together, 
you'll some oftentimes just get like muddy browns. That's why I wanted to leave some of these white spaces there on purpose. Um, so while we're doing this, you can also stripe. I like to use stripe as a verb. <laughs> use like just make these little stripes going across that uh, white space that we left there. Um, just making sure to leave the white space in the middle so that we can still, for the most part, have that twinkling effect. So now that I've added some orange, I'm gonna add a little bit of a darker yellow, like a yellow ochre kind of color. And painting water really is just doing this. It's layering on different colors on top of each other. And that's what makes, I mean, I say just, but that's what makes it kind of tricky is when you try to do it with the wet on wet technique, the colors can kind of all blend together in a big mess. And uh, that can be okay too, but you just wanna be aware of how much water is on your paper and how much water is on your paintbrush because if too much water is on your paint or on your paintbrush or on your paper, the watercolor is just gonna explode everywhere. So, um, you know, that's something to be aware of as you are painting this. And so then I'm going to take even more yellow here, a light yellow, and just add it mostly in the middle, leaving behind some of this white space, as we talked about before, because that is what's going to help give us the effect of like the twinkling sun on the ocean. And then as a final thing, I'm going to add a little bit of a darker blue. So when I add it, it's the same blue color, but instead of using a really light value, I'm going to add just a little darker values and I'm not going to do it everywhere, just a few stripes here and there. And then um, because this is still wet on wet, I'm going to go in after with my with a thirsty brush, as we said before, and uh, lift some of the pigment off. But I do want some spots of contrast. And not that we're trying to make this look exactly like waves, as I said before, that would be a different tutorial here, but I do want some of this contrast um, just to help the effect. So. But now that I have all of this down, I'm going to use a thirsty brush and just lift and soften some of these edges here so that I can see more of the orange and so that my brush, notice as I'm lifting, you can see even more white space. And adding that just adds more contrast and helps to give this an even more um, like wave-like feel. I don't want to say makes it look more realistic because that's, uh, you know, not what we're attempting. We're not attempting realism here. We're just trying to mimic the effect using loose watercolor techniques and lifting water off of lifting pigment using a thirsty brush is one way to do that with watercolor. So, okay. I think that that looks pretty good. And now I there's just one more thing I'm going to do, but first I am going to let this dry. Um, mostly this is done, but I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to add just a few like sparkles of white gouache just to um, add one last little detail to this. This layer is dry and for one last detail, I'm just taking a small brush, uh, a small round like detail brush. And with my white gouache, I am just adding some dots all along where the white spaces are. And that's to, not, that's to help make them look not quite so choppy. The white spaces are really doing the work of mimicking the uh, sunlight that we're trying to like have reflected off of the ocean but these just little dots are going to help enhance that effect and so I'm just kind of uh, putting them in 
horizontal lines where most of the white spaces already are. So I'm not like creating new designs or anything, just layering them on top and around where we left these white spaces here. And once again, it doesn't look super realistic, but it's just supposed to help give you that look and feel of the sunlight sparkling off of the ocean here and uh, waves kind of lapping on top of each other. So there we go. That is a loose watercolor ocean sunset that we did mostly all in one layer except for uh, the little dots of gouache. And I really love doing landscapes like this. Uh, this was the last in a series of three that I painted with you. Uh, I love doing landscapes like this because it helps me loosen up and it helps me not worry so much about being super, you know, realistic with my painting. I don't have to make everything look perfect or everything look like a photo. I can lean into the imperfection and appreciate the colors that are blending um, for what they are instead of for what they, like it doesn't look exactly like the photo, but it still looks really cool. And I would be happy to have this hang in any room in my home. So thanks again for joining me. I hope that you enjoy this little tape peel at the end of the video. I always have so much fun doing these loose um, watercolor paintings from reference photos. If you have any suggestions or requests for paintings that I should do in the future, drop them in the comments. And if you really liked this tutorial and want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. See you next time.